Welcome to Soul Winning with Lakeisha, where you will learn how to share the gospel with ease, conquer objections, overcome fears, renew your hunger for the word, infusing boldness like never before. It's time for the wise to win souls with Lakeisha. Let's get into today's lesson, starting now. All right, you guys. Well, welcome to Soul Winning with Lakeisha. And I just want to welcome you to today's particular episode. I know that you guys have had a great week. I'm hoping that you had a great week and a great day. And I just want to welcome you, all of those who have been following uh, Soul Winning here. And those of you who are new, welcome to the the broadcast here. And I just want to encourage you to visit the website, soulwinningwithlakeisha.com. Soul Winning with Lakeisha, that's spelled L-A-K. E-I-S-H-A dot com. Definitely visit the website so that you can get access to learning more about Soul Winning with Lakeisha, as well as being able to, you know, just reach out and continue to be connected here. Uh, you know, you want to make, make sure that you get access to past uh, shows that we share some great information on. Uh, first, of course, starting with Soul Winning and its importance, our role as believers in winning souls and building the kingdom, you know, as well as even a five-day class that we did um, have on the show and sponsor on the show. So again, definitely visit soulwinningwithlakeisha.com so that you can get access to, of course, our past content. And we definitely encourage you, you know, if you felt led, if God leads you to provide any type of uh, donation to continue the the broadcast, continue it on and on and on so that we can continue to educate and expound on the Word of God and how we ought to go forth and be that light in the world and the salt upon the very earth. So again, thank you so much, each and every one of you. So if you have been following us, even if you're new here, you would have recognized that we have been on a bit of a series. I would call it a series where we've talked about some of the hindrances, some of the, some of the hindrances, of course, of, of being able to effectively win souls, right? And then we also talked about prerequisites. And so, of course, the way in which the title of today's show, it, it really focuses in on a, a hindrance, but at the same time, it also hints at what we must have before we go out and and really want to be that light to be that witness an effective witness for Christ in the earth and so before we even get into prerequisite number 7 and this is going to be the final prerequisite in this particular series so definitely go back to the website to learn more about the other 6 that we've discussed but the seventh one that we're going to really stop at at you know in this particular series has a lot to do with willpower and a lot of the hindrances that we face as believers is the lack of willpower. So let us go before God in prayer, right? Because many of you may have had some trying days. And I know, of course, today has been one of those days, but we press, we press, we press. And that's something, of course, that we're going to talk about on today. So let's go before God in prayer. So Father, ah, Abba Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for knowing that you are God, and beside you there is no other. We thank you for the strength that you've given us in our mind, the strength in our bodies, even our spirit, man, God. We thank you, Father, for being a gracious God, for giving us, O Lord, so many opportunities, even though we've messed up many times. But Father, even now, God, we ask, because of your graciousness, God, We ask that you would forgive us of our sins. Father, cleanse our hearts, cleanse our minds of all unrighteousness in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us, O Lord, to be the men, to be the women you've called and created for us to be. Help us to go out, help us to do what it is you've called us to be and to do. Being that light in the world, being the salt in the earth, God, being able to open our mouths and when you're le- when you're leading us to to share the gospel, to share this message of hope and inspiration, God. And so, Lord God, have your way, have your way, dear Lord. And so, Father, guide me as I, oh God, as I allow you, Father God, to go forth. Let me decrease that you may increase. And that you may speak to the people, O Lord, who listen now and who may listen later. 
And so I thank you for it now, God. May your will be done and bless those listening in their households. In the name of Jesus, amen. And so guys, get your Bibles out, right? Break your Bibles out. We're going to actually flip to the letter, right? This was a letter written by the Apostle Paul uh, to the church of Philippi. And uh, we're turning to Philippians. So turn to the book of Philippians chapter 4. And actually, we're going to start... We're going to start at verse, let's start at verse 10. And we're going to read through verse 13, and we're going to definitely focus in on verse 13. So we're at Philippians chapter 4, starting at verse 10, reading through verse 13. All right, so we're going to show, we're going to talk about how willpower is important as it pertains to soul winning. That is our focus. All right, so it reads as follows. The Lord has made me very great, grateful that at last you have thought about me once again. Actually, you were thinking about me all along, but you didn't have any chance to show it. I am not complaining about having too little. I have learned to be satisfied with whatever I have. I know what it is to be poor or to have plenty. And I have lived under all kinds of conditions. I know what it means to be full or to be hungry, to have too much or too little. Verse 13 reads, Christ gives me the strength to face anything. Let me read that again. This is verse 13. It says, Christ gives me the strength to face anything. And of course, this particular version that I'm reading from, right, it's the contemporary English version. With this version, it does break down and help bring it into today's context as far as what it actually means. doesn't change the meaning of it, but it just makes it more plain. Okay? So definitely, in looking at these particular verses, we, we have to understand that Apostle Paul was talking to the church of Philippi, you know, and he was just explaining to them how, how he can connect, how he can resonate with so many uh, different walks of life. He understands different situations because he's been a part of them. And, and many of us as believers, we, we, you know, we find ourselves in different situations. And, you know, we, there may be times where we may lack certain things or we may feel we lack certain things, right? Or it, it may be, of course, times of plenty where it feels like we have more than enough, where, you know, our cup is running over, right? And, you know, there may be times where, you know, where it just seems like, you know, all, all, for lack of words, everything is happening, right? Everything is happening and that maybe some things you may feel is not going the way that you would want it to go. But guess what? This is where willpower comes in. And we get willpower because of our foundation, uh, because of our groundedness in Christ, And so this is where our power comes from. Our power comes from being connected to the source. And you can think about this when you think about a toaster. Think about that toaster, right? You're about to make some good old-fashioned toast. And so you got that toaster. You're sitting it on the the counter there. And, okay, you put your bread in, and you try to push down a little thing that allows the bread to, to become toasted, right? Well, guess what? Because the fact that 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 toaster is just sitting on the counter and you just pushed a button doesn't mean that it's going to toast your bread. Guess what? You need to plug that toaster in, get the plug, the end of the toaster, right? Get the plug and plug it into the socket so that it can get some power so that it can get toasted, that bread can get toasted. So guess what? In order for us to get the power... In order for us to get toasted, to be just right, to be the way that we need to be, in order for us to be in right standing with God, just like the toast needs to be right, right, when we take it in, because we want that toasted bread, in order for us to be right, we have to be connected to the source. We have to be connected to Christ. Christ is the source of our power and that willpower that we need before we can go out and effectively share the gospel. Why do we need this? Why do we need this? We, we need this because how are we going to be an effective witness and share the good news about Christ if 
if he hasn't, you know, if we haven't allowed that to be made, made evident in our lives. And it has to take place on a consistent basis. It can't be where one moment we have power and the next moment we don't. You know, it's just like a wave that's, you know, tossed to and fro, you know, not really being consistent. Of course, times are going to get difficult and you may need to back away, right? You may need to go into your secret place and reboost and get rejuvenated. But guess what? You can be resilient and bounce back bounce back even when tough situations in life take place you know someone passes away in your family or a close friend passes away you know or you lose that job or better yet someone gets ill in the family guess what you too can bounce back even if you had to file bankruptcy or better yet even when you've given a a negative report given a negative report by the doctor you can bounce back why? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Why? Because God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ever ask or ever think. Why? Because you know that God is a great God. He's bigger than your problem. You have to magnify God instead of magnifying your problem. And I'm not just speaking to you, but I'm speaking to myself today as well. We have to magnify God and minimize our problem. The more we magnify God, the more our problem becomes smaller and smaller. I think the problem is that we, we don't maintain willpower because, guess what? We got the wrong type of power. We try to live on our own power instead of living on the Holy Ghost power. And we have to stay connected to the source, which is Jesus. He is the light of the world. He is the salt of the earth, right? He is the one that keeps us salted. He is the one that allows us to be that light. He is the light that came into the world, as the Apostle John said in the Gospel of John. He is that light. And many of them didn't even know it. You know, many of them during that time didn't know he was the light. So we have to, we know, he, we know that Jesus is the light. So we have to stay connected. You know, of course, you know, just like a boxer, the boxers in the ring, right? They have to go many rounds, you know, in order to even be considered to to win the fight. And in this life, as we go through day by day, we're going to get, it's every, it's another round. Every day is another round in this, in the ring. And guess what? We have to fight against temptation. We have to fight against trials and tribulations. We have to fight against, of course, the test, the fiery darts and the, and the things that the enemy may try to throw against us. But guess what? We will overcome. And the way you overcome is by maintaining willpower. You get the willpower by staying connected to the source. And let me ask you this question. Do you unplug your refrigerator every day? Do you unplug your microwave every day? This You have to think about these concepts. These things stay connected in the socket. So why can't we stay connected to the source on a daily basis to maintain the willpower that we need? So think about this as you're going to work, of course, and you have that, that supervisor that may be nagging, right? Of course, the supervisor is the one in authority over you, so we have to respect him or her. But by staying connected to the source, you can get through yet another day with that supervisor. Or better yet, how about that client that you may have? That client that you know, of course, she's the one, he's the one that's helping you to have a job or helping you to stay in business. So you have to be grateful even for those fiery trials that may come up, those darts that may be thrown at you because they're there to make you stronger and they're there to build your willpower. It talks about that in Ephesians, right? If you look at Ephesians, and I believe it's chapter 6, where it talks about the fiery darts of the wicked. Okay, well, well, we may get things thrown at us. Things may come up unexpectedly, right? And of course, many things come up unexpectedly in our lives. But we have to look at them as times where it challenges us to grow and become stronger. You know, we may feel tired at that moment. But guess what? It's there to help us to be stronger, to be more mature believers. And as we become mature in our faith, mature believers, we can then therefore, right, go back out there and say, look, I did it. And so can you. I did it. I've overcome, you know, uh, a, a health issue in my life. I've overcome, you know, whatever it is that you're facing. You have to stick with it. You have to go through it. If God didn't think you can make it through it, he wouldn't have given it to you. 
he wouldn't have allowed you to be in the situation that you may be in right now if he didn't think that you couldn't get through it. So the same thing we must think about as we as we go forth and as we want to be that effective witness, we have to analyze our lives, how we're how we're overcoming situations in our lives on a daily basis, which helps us to realize, okay, well, yes, it's God that's helping me to get through this thing. And so it helps you to build, you know, build up your your faith, build up your prayer life, and then of course, ultimately your willpower is made stronger. And so that willpower is needed because you're going to face those fiery darts even as you intentionally go out there and try to be that that witness for Jesus. You have to maintain willpower before going out there because he's going to throw all types of things in your mind. Of course, I don't like to hold anything back because I like to be truthful and honest, but he's going to throw all types of hindrances and obstacles and hurdles in your path to stop you or try to prevent you from going out and doing what it is you're called to do, fulfilling your purpose in the earth. He's going to try by all means necessary. But guess what? Again, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You have the great one dwelling inside of you. And if you don't, I suggest you get him. You get the Holy Spirit inside of you so that he can help you to press, to press, to press, to press. Press forward towards the mark for the prize of the higher calling in Christ Jesus. Right? That's being more like Christ. That's the prize. Being more like him, fulfilling his will. That's the prize. So go out and get it. Go out and get that prize. He wants you to. He's keeping you in the race of life so that you can get it. So that at the end, you can hear those three words or those two words, right? Well done. And then the rest that follows, my good and faithful servant. So I'm going to compel you today, even as you're listening right now, to grow, to sustain, to maintain, and, you know, continue to share and encourage others to get willpower. You need willpower before going out there and and desiring to effectively share the gospel of the kingdom with others. So you've heard it today from Lakeisha McKnight here on Soul Winning with Lakeisha. I want to stop for a moment and pray for you so that you, and so that even myself, I encourage myself even as we go forth in this, this particular episode here, but just to go forth and do what it is God has called you to do. And so, Father in heaven, thank you for the opportunity to share. Thank you for the opportunity to share of your word, to be able to encourage others in the faith, to maintain the willpower, right, that you have given unto us. Father, we understand that there are going to be times in life that may seem difficult. But guess what? You, you will help us get through it because you are our daddies. You are our daddy, God, and we thank you so much. And so, God, we thank you. We are a representation of you, representation of the kingdom. So help us to continue to build our willpower, to have strong, unshakable faith. Help us to do what you've called us to do, say what you've called us to say, and we'll forever give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. And so for those of you listening, again, I just want to encourage you to visit soulwinningwithlakeisha.com. I want you to come back by next Thursday at 7.30 p.m. for our next episode, our next broadcast. We are going to be sharing some more great content, some things that are going to help you to build your faith and to effectively win souls for the kingdom. Because why? He that winneth souls is wise. You all be blessed, and I'll speak with you on next week. You have listened to Soul Winning with Lakeisha. Connect with Lakeisha at soulwinningwithlakeisha.com for additional resources, exercises for lesson reviews, and so much more. Feel free to sow a financial seed to help Lakeisha in this mission of helping believers share the word. Be sure to come back next week for another lesson here on Soul Winning.